everybody, it's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly episode, and this is episode 174 for July the 5th, 2022. And to all my American subscribers out there, I hope you had a great uh, long weekend, great 4th of July. We had a great Canada Day celebration here. So, <clears throat> officially, excuse me, frog in my throat, officially, summer has begun, at least in the Northern hem Hemisphere. Okay, so speaking of that, why don't we turn ourselves towards what I've been making? And yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about Christmas stuff. But before I do that, I'm going to show you these. Um, this was a in the hoop pattern uh, that I purchased from uh, Creative Kiwi. They put this up special for Canada Day, which considering Creative Kiwi is in New Zealand, that was really nice of them to think about us on the other side of the world. Um, so I bought this. They also had a free... Uh, downloadable file for making a background to create a Canadian flag with these as well, a small one. And I was going to do that, but then I thought, no, I don't have any place to really put it. And it was kind of like the day before Canada Day when I did this. So I thought, no, I'll just make the Maple Leafs uh, because I think they're kind of cute and you could use them as applique for other projects or things like that so i made one it came they came in three different sizes i actually created four different sizes because i put it into the editing software on the actual embroidery machine and reduced it to the smallest size i could and um, i just got playing around with them and create it uh, what you see in front of you right now now of course um what are you going to do with these <laughs> i'll show you let me just move it over. There you go. That's what I did with them. I made two of these and I put them on top of uh, my glass coffee table in my family room. And I think they look kind of nice there. And now you can't see it because it's out of shot. But there is um, my latest Canadian quilt uh, hanging over the uh, other love seat in the room. And uh, it's made with the similar colors. So actually, it looks like I purposely have been matching things up doing a little home decor uh i wasn't but uh yeah it works very nice and i think it just sort of well it breaks up the monotony of a clear glass table i guess and uh i think i'll leave them there for a while um i don't know how long but i was also thinking you know what you could do is you could make one of these or a couple of these for every season just change your colors out and yes, they are maple leaves, but, you know, in Christmas colors, they could look really nice, too. I don't know if I'll do that or not, um, but it was just fun to make. It didn't take that long, and uh, I didn't sew them all together. I uh, fabric glued them to each other. So, yeah, no sew. Well, not really. You have to sew to make them, you know, on your embroidery machine. But they don't take much time at all. If you ha have an embroidery machine... Uh, and you've never checked out uh, Creative Kiwi, you should. They are uh, a great company. They have a lot of freebies. And they've got a lot of uh, tutorials, YouTube tutorials, to go along with some of their uh, more involved designs. And those tutorials are on YouTube. And I think they fall under K's Cuts. Uh, K as in K-A-Y and Cuts as in C-U-T-Z. So anyways, that's one of the things that I was doing. But... The main event, and I'm still working on these, is I've created six Christmas table runners. And uh, I'm not quite finished them. They've all been uh, quilted now. I've spoken about these before. And you can see that I have made the binding for them. And uh, since I took this picture, three of them have been completely finished there. Now they have their binding on them. And they're looking quite nice, I think. Um, now, when I did quilt these, I put them on two at a time onto my Lucy. And everything was going well until about halfway through the last set. And I don't know what happened. Well, I do know what happened. I ran out of bobbin thread. Okay, that happens. And uh, so I put in a new bobbin. And uh, I tried to <clears throat> start where I had left off. But I kind of forgot how you do that. Because I haven't done it much. I've been lucky. Most of the times I check my bobbin uh, after a few rows. And, uh, you know, I decide then and there whether I'm going to put in a new one. To avoid, you know, in the middle of a project, uh, having to replace the bobbin. 
So I tried everything and the system was not cooperating with me. No fault of the system. All the fault was mine. So if you look at this one on the end, I don't know if you can see my arrow or not up here, but um, just make my arrow a little bigger. How's that there? So I'm up in there. There is a gap, not a huge one, but a gap there and there. And that had to do with the misalignment of the rows. Now, to the average person looking at this, you know, when it's on a table or something and there may be things sitting on top of it, you'd never notice that those parts did not really get quilted. But I know they're there. And it happened on this one too, uh, as well, because they were both on the long arm at the same time. So since then, I have gone uh, and done some exploring to figure out how to really get your needle lined back up if you have a thread break or you run out of bobbin thread in the middle of a project. And uh, yeah, I see now what they were doing. Probably should have taken a look at that before I decided to do my own thing with it. But you know me, I'm an idiot. So I didn't. But anyways, part of the learning experience, uh, it's only a minor little problem. And as I said, I don't think anybody is really going to pay any attention to that. So I have three of those done. And uh, they're going to be part of my Christmas gift stash. Yes, I start now and I create a Christmas gift stash of things that I'm making. Um, I keep a list of what those things are because, you know, by the time Christmas comes around and I'm thinking about who I'm going to give things to, I'll forget what I had made because that's just how I roll. And um, yeah, so I have no idea who these will be for. They may not be for anybody. I don't know. Just be part of the stash. I just enjoy making these things, right? And well, how many table runners does one person need? Hmm, not many. So yeah, I'm hoping to get those done. Um, I d don't know if I'll get... I have three more to do and uh, uh, for the binding. And I'll get started on those after I've done all my video things that I need to do today. And uh, yeah, we'll get on with it. And I have another project that I'm going to start soon, but I'm going to show that to you shortly. Um, well, let, let, let's get into that section too. So I went shopping and there was a sale at Kawartha Quilting. And of course, you know what I had to have, the five inch block AccuQuilt dies. Now, AccuQuilt just came out with this five inch block and I was waiting for it to go on sale because you know these things are pricey. Kawartha Quilting put it on sale. So I got it and I'm happy. Now I have a 12 inch, a 10 inch, an eight inch, a six inch, a five inch, and a four inch block set. That is all their cube sets. So what's after this you will say? Well, they have add-ons for each of these, which are equally as expensive. Um, I'm not completely sold on whether or not I should get those. But you know me, when I buy something and there's a collection, I want them all. I want everything in it. So down the road, maybe I'll start adding some of the add-ons to this as well. I have to say, though, I really don't regret spending the money on my AccuQuilt. I have been using it a lot. And um, I love it. I really do love it. I love the accuracy, the speed, the whole bit with it. So, yeah. Um... I don't know if I'll be investing in many of the uh, applique dies because I'm not a big appliqueer. I don't mind doing applique, but I'm just not big into it. Um, although there are some specialty dies that do specialty types of blocks, like a Mariner's Compass and things like that. Yeah, at the first of the year, if you remember, I ordered these very expensive ruler sets to make this, to use this system to make a Mariner's Compass. Well, they're still in the package. I have not taken them out. I'm a little intimidated by that project. And I'm really thinking, hmm, yes, I did spend like well over $200 on these specialty rulers that are still in the bag, as I said. Um, but it might be easier to do a Mariner's Compass if I actually invested in the die that cuts out the pieces for that. I don't know. Uh, I'll wait and I'll see. You know, I don't know about, I don't know about you, 
But I just get so overwhelmed with projects because I see something I like and I go, ooh, I have to buy the pattern. I saw something um, online uh, yesterday. Um, well, it wasn't online. It was on YouTube. And I really liked the pattern design of it. And I thought, ooh, I'd like that. And I almost bought it. I went right to the website. It was listed in somebody's show notes. And off I went. And, you know, $10 American for the pattern. So $13, $14 Canadian. It was downloadable, the whole bit. I almost pushed the button. And then I held back. And I held back not because of what it was going to cost. That wasn't a lot of money. But I held back because I know. So now I'll buy that. I will put it in my little basket of things I want to get to. And I won't get to it. I have way too many projects. And speaking of way too many projects, so what else did I buy when I was at Kawartha Quilting pick up, picking up the five inch cube? Well, I picked up this pattern. Oh, I'm a, such a pattern slut. Um, I love this one because it uses 10 and a half, or not 10, two and a half inch strips. It's by Cozy Quilt Designs. I love cozy quilt design patterns. I have had so much success with every one of their uh, patterns that I have bought. They are the gold standard, in my opinion, in pattern writing. Very, very clear, very, very well laid out, everything. They're just excellent. So I saw this pattern and I got thinking, I have a lot of orphan two and a half inch strips that have come from jelly rolls from other packages. And I think this particular pattern would lend itself to using those up very well. And it looks like it's probably a fairly fast project as well. So yeah, this is one I want to get to very soon. Now, since I'm making Christmas presents and things like that, I might be able to kill two birds with one stone. I could use Christmas fabrics or something that looks like Christmas fabrics in this. However, the beauty of this particular pattern called long tall is that you can, you're using basically jelly roll strips uh, for this. And I don't have jelly roll strips, I don't think, I have to look at my stash, that are Christmassy. I had some at one time, but I think I've used them all up. Now, of course, that doesn't mean I can't go out and get one, a jelly roll of it. So I don't know. I'll see. But you see what I mean? I pile these patterns up. I have hundreds and hundreds, literally, of patterns that I have downloaded, I've purchased, I've gotten for free. Um, and I tuck them away in a filing cabinet drawer. They're not even organized, really. Not well. Somebody asked me how I organize my patterns. I don't. They go in a big basket. That basket's in a file drawer. I shut the file drawer. I forget through there. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. So, um, and I know if I go through and try to organize them at some point in time, I'm going to be like, oh, squirrel. I'm going to see ones that I have forgotten that I bought at one time and I'll pull those out. And then all I'll do is put them in the basket for future projects and I'll never get to them. them and the future project basket's going to overflow. So speaking of which, yeah, I've got another project. <laughs> so I didn't intend to buy this. I had seen the finished a version of this finished at Kawartha Quilting last fall before Christmas. They had it on display. It's a wall hanging. It's not huge. I think it's only about 21 inches square. And it takes the tiny twister uh, ruler. Now, you've seen me talk about these before. Um, and uh, when I get started on this project, I might uh, video a little bit of how that ruler actually works. It's very simple, but it gives you this very neat design, as you can see on the uh, cover of the pattern. It is a Christmas wreath. It takes a lot of little bits of fabric. It's a great scrappy scrap buster, but the you've got to pick your colors so that you know you can see the the wreath. Uh, it you you know you want high contrast between the background and the wreath pieces themselves. Um, in this picture, it looks like they've added a bow, which I probably will do too, because I think that really makes it even more interesting. So I have this. I have cut out 
the basic squares, there are 196 three and a half inch squares in total. Then you have to sew those all together in rows. And then you start cutting again using this special ruler to get that effect that you see on there. It sort of looks like a windmill block, but it's not. Um, it's not difficult. It can get confusing um, with so many little pieces, but I'm going to give it a go. So, and this was an impulse buy because while I was there, I don't know what came to my mind, but I didn't see this out on the shelf um last week i just said to him hey do you remember that christmas wreath wall hanging that you had last year oh yeah the ho twister holiday i said you don't happen to have the pattern for that still oh yes we do and they have the ruler so i bought the two of those so yeah the way i justified this one is because i'm making christmas things right <laughs> so you know i had to have it and I have other Christmas projects uh, lined up too. I dug out of my embroidery files uh, one of those tiled um, wall hangings that you do in the hoop uh, on your embroidery machine. And uh, it, I've got the threads picked out for it and everything like that. And I have to start it now if I want it done by Christmas. Would it be a gift? No. No, that one won't be a gift. So... We'll see. I'll keep you up to date on that if I ever get to it. Yeah. <laughs> that seems to be my story, isn't it? If I ever get to it, if I ever get to it, I keep telling you that if I ever get to it, I need 12 of me to do all these projects that I want to do. Okay. So I do have a little demo to insert in here for you this week. And um, it's about using weights. Um, I make some of my own weights and things like that. But weights can be a very handy thing for quilters. Now, garment sewers know about uh, pattern weights. You know, they hold down their pattern uh, on top of their fabric when they're cutting out their shapes and things for that. Walter has some for that. But for quilters, uh, do we need weights? Oh, yes, we do. And I'll show you why. This week's demo is a really short one because I want to talk about weights and what I do with weights. Now, I have two kinds of weights here. Uh, I have these little dumbbells. They're three pounds a piece. And I have these little containers, which are basically uh, little jars that I made on my 3D printer and I filled them with pennies. And they serve as weights as well. Now, what do I use weights for? Well, this is a trick I learned from Donna Jordan on Jordan Fabrics YouTube channel. She uses one of these weights to hold down one of her long rulers when she's cutting a long strip of fabric. She puts this near the top of the ruler and it keeps it steady because what happens when you hold down a ruler with your hand, you know that when you start uh, cutting with your rotary cutter and you get closer to the top and your hand is down here, your ruler can slip a little bit, little bit over and that's going to make a wow in your strip when you're cutting it. So this just helps to keep it stable. And I picked these up, well one of them I picked up at a shopper's drug mart and the other one Walter found I think at Canadian Tire but I'm not really sure. But you should be able to find them in uh, like a place like Walmart or online, that kind of thing. Now these are only three pound. Um, I think Donna Jordan was using five pound. So you can get a little exercise while you're using them as well. But that works really well for that kind of thing. Um, the other thing that I used them for was on my cutting mat, as you can see, I got a drop down here. And if I'm putting on, um, trying to clip on a border piece to a long quilt, well, they're heavy and they slide off of your cutting table uh, from the weight. So I would put these on top of the edge of the quilt and that would hold it. But they'd kind of get in my way because they're a little bit bigger. And so I had to manipulate around them. So what I did was I created these little jars, as I've already shown you. I actually have three of them. And uh, I just use those as anchors on the corner of a quilt on the table. And it keeps it from sliding down when I pin the uh, border piece onto it. And as I said, I just filled these with pennies because in Canada, we no longer use the penny. Um, and so we always have a lot of pennies laying around. So I just filled them up with pennies and they work really well. Now you could fill these with anything uh, you want. And I was able to print these on my 3D printer, but um, you don't have to. Uh, a little mason jar 
filled with, um, you know, some washers or something like that, uh, or nuts and bolts or whatever, um, those could work as well. In fact, if you want to pretty them up a little bit, and if you don't intend to use the nuts and bolts in them, you could cover them with some fabric or uh, some paper, glue it on or whatever, and uh, makes them look like a little pretty accessory in your sewing room, if that bothers you. Uh, you know, about seeing mason jars full of nuts and bolts uh, or pennies. So yeah, it's a simple idea, but it really does help make things uh, a little bit better in terms of keeping things steady, like your ruler, or, you know, keeping things from slipping off the end of your uh, cutting table or whatever table you are working on. So yeah, weights are important. Oh yeah, and another thing you could use these weights for as well, especially these ones. You could use them as pattern weights. So if you're cutting out a pattern design, an applique, a large applique, or if you do garment sewing, you could use something like this as well. And in fact, because I have a 3D printer, I could make these a little wider and a little shorter as well. So it distributes the weight a little better and they're not sitting up maybe as high up from your table. In fact, I think I might just do that. So that's my demo for the week. So that takes me to the subscribers quilt of the week. And this is not actually a quilt. It is a piece of weaving. Very fascinating. And this is from one of my subscribers. Her name is now I hope I'm saying it right. Thea Wheelis. It might be Tia. Sorry, I'm not sure which way to say it. And I am in the process of talking to uh, Thea about doing an interview with her because she does some very interesting things that I think other people would enjoy. But we haven't set a time and date for that. So that's all I'm going to say about that for now. But in the meantime, take a look at her wonderful creation. This week's quilt from a subscriber is not a quilt at all, but a piece of hand woven fabric. And it's a very beautiful piece, as you can see. And this comes from Thea Wheelis. And I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Uh, she's a regular subscriber here to my channel. And she says, this is clearly not a quilt, but I do tablet weaving slash card weaving. And these are five of the bands I've woven. All of them are linen four ply thread and I weave on a support frame my husband built me, typically with cards he made me. We do historical reenactment. The vine pattern was such a pain that I'm reluctant to do it again, or at least if I do, I'm splitting it into shorter warps, even though that means more waste. The first band I ever made is the one sewn onto the tunic on top. Um, so this is really quite unique and very, very intricate looking work. So I can see why you may have found it a bit of a pain to do. But the end result is very beautiful. And this is not something I have ever tried. But after seeing your creation, I'm thinking, hmm, maybe down the road I should give this a try as well. So thank you, Thea, for sending this to, uh, to me. And now I'm going to turn your attention to the YouTube channel of the week. This is one uh, by a lady who is actually a pharmacist. Quilters come from all walks of life. Um, it's called Cat, the Catbird Quilts. Uh, they're very, very professionally done. In fact, they would remind you of somebody on television doing them. That's how professional these videos are, but very interesting. She seems to be a very knowledgeable lady about sewing and quilting as well. In fact, I reached out to her about doing an interview, but sadly, she's just too busy, she said right now, to, you know, she just didn't have the time. So maybe sometime down the road, uh, maybe if her schedule lightens up a little bit, uh, I'll be able to do an interview with her because I think she'd be a fascinating pe person to interview. But anyways, in the meantime, here's her YouTube channel. This week's YouTube channel is one that I stumbled upon about a week ago, and I'm really happy that I did. And I think this is a YouTube channel that has a lot of potential for a lot of very informative videos in the future. It's called The Catbird Quilts, and as you can see, she does not have that many um, videos up yet. So I would say this is a work in progress. Although she's doing very well in terms of subscribers because to date she has 3.54 uh, thousand subscribers. So just over 3,500 subscribers. And her latest video 
uh, is just up an hour ago from when I first watched uh, or first started this review of her channel. But it looks like she's only started to put up videos two weeks ago. And the ones she has up here, I found very interesting, very well done, very professional, very clear. So I'm looking forward to her uh, additional videos that I'm sure she'll be putting up sometime soon. In fact, I am going to reach out to the Catbird Quilts and see if I can do an interview with her because it looks like she's an up-and-coming YouTuber. So if you're interested in sewing... Uh, she seems to have uh, a lot of knowledge, a lot of background knowledge, which I gather from her videos that are already there. And she also does quilting. Now, she does have a series on uh, called Why I Love Quilting with Men's Dress Shirts and uh, Thrift Store Hauls. And then she does a whole series about uh, men's dress shirts and turning those into fabric you can use for quilts and other things. So, as I said... Her videos are very professionally done. She seems very knowledgeable, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of her videos in the future. So earlier we were talking about patterns I want to get done. Well, here's another future uh, project from my vision board. It's called The Zigzag by Becky Tillman uh, Peterson, and it looks very, very interesting. And well, here you go. Here's my review. This week's pattern from my vision board is called Zigzag, and this is a free pattern. It is downloadable as a PDF, and it's by the designer Becky Tillman Peterson, and you can find this at quiltedtwins.com. And I went to her website, and she also has a store on there where you can buy fabrics and pick up a lot of other both uh, paid for patterns and free patterns. She has quite a few free patterns. And this one, I really liked the, the design of it. And it's basically made up of a set of log cabin quilts. This would make a great scrappy quilt, uh, especially if you've got a lot of strips of fabric laying around. And uh, I would imagine it will go together pretty easily. Um, it would look nice even in Christmas uh, fabrics as well. Now, I have never done one of her particular patterns before, so I really can't comment at this point in time as to how easy they are to follow, but I'm just looking quickly through the pattern itself, and it looks pretty much very straightforward. So if you've done a log cabin before block, I'm sure you'll have absolutely no problem with this one. So that is Zigzag by uh, Becky Tillman Peterson, and the link for this free pattern is in the show notes. And speaking of interviews, I do not have one for this week, but I will have one for next week because later today I am interviewing somebody who I think you're really going to enjoy. I'm looking forward to this interview, and that's all I'm going to say about it. Next week, you'll be able to see it for yourself, and I'll talk more about it then. And again, as always, I'm looking for people to interview. So if you know of someone, uh, you know my criterion, okay? It can't be a big name. It has to be somebody who's just like the rest of us out there. Uh, they may or may not have a YouTube channel or website. That's not important. If they do, that's great. Um, if you think they would be somebody that I should interview, that other people would be interested in hearing about, um, please let me know, but I need contact information of some sort. If they have a Facebook channel, if they have a YouTube channel, if you know their email address by chance, or something like that, uh, that will help greatly in locating them and sending them off a, a request for it. And of course, I'm always, always interested in interviewing anybody who's one of my subscribers on here, so do give it some, some consideration. Okay. So, what's next? Online quilting stores. This week, I'm reviewing one called Quilters Quest Fabric. This week's Canadian quilt store online is in Newfoundland, Canada, and it is called Quilters Quest Fabric Shop. 
And this is their front page. And let's just take a look at what they're talking about here. They say Quilters Quest is happy to offer a rewards program for shopping with us. For each dollar you spend before tax and shipping, you get one point. Points accumulate to 250. Once you've reached 250, you will have a $10 credit for your next purchase. Your points balance can be seen on the bottom of your receipt. Happy collecting. Well, okay. That's not really that stimulating, to be quite honest. For each dollar you spend, you get one point. So you got to spend $250 to get a $10 credit. Well, I mean, it's probably not that hard to spend $250. But, you know, that's not really my incentive for going here. So let's see if they have something else to entice me. Um, they tell you their location here, what they carry. And they do have uh, free shipping on purchases over $150 and one cent before taxes. Um, yeah, okay, they have gift cards and their featured categories. They have AccuQuilt, Fabric, New and Shop. Well, let's go to their fabric to start off with. Okay, right off the bat, their website, graphically speaking, is very plain, but they do have on the left-hand side, an index bar, which I do like. So they have over 562 fabrics, and then they're broken down into blenders, fennel, NHL hockey, holiday season, Lori Holt, Newfoundland tartan, novelty, panel, pre-cut solids, tone on tone, Toscana. And then they do have the brands listed as well, like Riley Blake, Northcott, Willington Prince, Timeless Treasures, etc. Okay. Not a huge selection, but they have some major names. So why don't we take a look at Northcott and see what they're selling that for? Okay, so it looks like $15.95. I'm assuming that's a meter, but we'll check that out to make sure. $13.95. So the prices range between $13.95 to $15.95, and I'm assuming that's a meter. So let's just click on one here and see if we can find out. Yes, that is per meter. So that is a good price. Now that's Northcott. Let's go back and check one of the more specialty types of fabrics that she lists, like Timeless Treasures. Now they're a little more expensive and I would expect that. And that's $18.95 and that's about the average price right now for uh, a meter of fabric. It was in meters, wasn't it? Yes, it is in meters, so that impresses me because I prefer it to be in meters than in yards. Okay, and they have lots of pictures of the fabric here. That's great. Now, just because I'm sort of in a seasonal Christmas mood, um, let's take a look at their holiday and seasonal fabrics. I thought I saw it some in here. That's uh, product category. Uh, I've lost it now. Let's just see. Okay, let's get back into fabric. Here we go. Holiday and seasonal. And it's about $18.95 a meter as well. Again, that is more specialty fabric, so you'd expect that. Um, Selection-wise, not that impressed. If you like Charlie Brown, though, there seems to be lots with Charlie Brown on it. Um, but really... Not a whole lot to choose from here in seasonal, but that may change when we get closer to like the holiday into the holiday season, like Halloween, um, Christmas, etc. Okay, so click on view all. Well, that's all there is there. Henry Glass, Riley Blake. Let's just take a look at the Riley Blake. Fifteen ninety five for Riley Blake. Oh, I see. I'm still into seasonal there as well so yeah okay well i'm not going to worry about that too much okay so fabric prices not bad not a huge selection but not a not an unreasonable selection so let's go to their accu quilt because you know i'm into that um accessories mats and of course the systems themselves and yeah, I have lots of appliques. Okay. 
and the usual kind of selection in three pages of those. Um, do they have the cubes though? I'm seeing the individual dies. What about cube sets? Hmm, not sure. Um, accessories. Okay, storage boxes, the pick. Uh, so, they don't. They're not showing the cubes on here. They're just showing the individual dies. Hmm. Okay. So, selection wise in Accu Quilt. Yeah, they don't really have the cubes. So, not a place I would go to to pick up anything uh, there in the AccuQuilt line. Okay, let's see what else that they have to offer in their shop. Let's take a look at batting. Um, they're sold out of the 8020 in 90 inch. Um, it looks like they're selling batting in pre-made-up packages. Or are they? Um, let's just check check on here. Nope, they do sell it by the meter as well. Um, 1995 per meter for batting, warm and white. Nah, it's a little pricey. I think that's a little pricey. I could be wrong. I don't buy that brand, so I'm not absolutely sure. Um, but again, not drawing me to the website to order from them, really. Um, okay, let's take a look at some other things. They have creative grid rulers. Do they have... Okay, backing. Wide back. And let's see what their prices are on wide back. $23.95. Five looks like the going price um, per meter. That's that's okay. That's actually not a bad price. That's about what I pay for it at Ultimate Sewing, which is an excellent price. So, and they've got some stuff here that's kind of interesting. Not a lot to choose from, but I haven't seen some of these designs before, like this one, for example. That's interesting. So I might be tempted to order some backing from them. Um. And they have wide back flannel as well. Not that I use that, but some people do. Okay, let's take a look then at something else. Uh, what about patterns or kits, that kind of thing? Um, patterns and books, quilt kits. So what do they have in patterns? Yeah. A few things. Um... Not so sure if uh, it's worth the trip <laughs> online to them, but maybe. Um, because I, I'm not seeing anything here I haven't seen in other places as well. Again, they do have it listed by design. Cozy Quilt. I do like Co Cozy Quilt. And that's about the general price for Cozy Quilt. Not a lot to choose from. Okay, so what else can we look for on here? Well, they have interfacing adhesives, okay, notions, sale and clearance. Let's take a look at their, no, let's take a look at their quilt kits, first of all. Well, they have three and two are sold out. And none of them are that impressive. Okay. And let's check, let's go back. And the last thing I want to check under their shop is what they've got on sale. Uh, they got an AccuQuilt die on sale. Uh, well, again, nothing here really grabbing me. Oh, the Mariner's Compass one. They've got that AccuQuilt die on sale. And some fabrics. Yeah. Stuff they're trying to get rid of, basically. But isn't that what sales are all about anyways? Um, so, okay, let's look up here. Let's look at classes. 
Okay, they have a block of the month, but it's not a class. Okay, and it doesn't look like they have anything else. Okay, um, on their calendar, they have the incoming up, block of the month, QQQ pickup, whatever that is, flaky friends to block of the month. It's not a class, but block of the month. Okay, not a lot going on. And Project Linus Canada. I am not sure what Project Linus is, but there is a link. Let's go to that and just see. Um, our mission is twofold. First, to provide love and sensitive security, warmth, and comfort to children who are seriously ill. Oh, okay. So they support that, and that's uh, for making things for kids, for seriously ill kids, I guess. Okay, well, that's nice that they're part of that. So anything else we can take a look at on here? Um, they have a newsletter, and you can sign up for that. And I would say that's about it. Okay. Um, what can I say? It's not drawing me to it. Uh, I might be more tempted if it was closer, if it was in Ontario where I am. Uh, they do have some fabrics to choose from. The prices are okay. And the shipping seems to be reasonable as well. Well, I didn't really check out. They have free over 150, but I wonder what their shipping policies or prices really are. Uh, their shipping policies. Um, we ship within two days of order being placed. Free shipping in Canada, over 150. Some items they don't. And I guess you don't find out about shipping until you buy something. I imagine it is by Canada Post. Should we take a fake um, fabric? Put it in our cart. Let's just see if we get an idea of shipping. I don't understand. Ooh. Wait. Oh, I did it as a fat quarter. Okay. I want a fat quarter. And why do I have to put in for half a meter? Why can't I put in a full meter? I do not understand. Is it just that one? I'm going to add it to the cart. Subtotal. Okay, this is very, very confusing. 1495 quantity. 0.75. But I put in half a meter. It's got three quarters of a meter. Okay, now I am very confused. Let's go back and pick something else. Let's pick this one. Okay, 18. Add to cart. Okay, so that's up there. So maybe that's all they had left of it. That might be what's happening. Okay, let's go to checkout, because what we're really doing here is I want to check out their shipping. Okay. We're sorry, but we no longer have 0.75 of Sparkles Blue. Your cart quantity for this item has been reduced to... Okay. That's kind of interesting. I've never seen this on a website, but at least you know. And you have the chance then to eliminate that, which I will do right now. But, um, okay, if I go to checkout. Okay, here's the shipping. Expediate at flat rate is $16.95 and economy is $14, two to seven business days. Okay, so if I up the amount, let's go up to five meters. That changed the expediated rate, but the economy is still the same. Okay. That's got to be Canada uh, post. 
All right, so that gives us a little bit of idea about how much things are going to cost in terms of shipping. So overall, for me, um, I, I am not attracted to this. I'm not saying uh, anything negative about that. It just means I can find things and more selection from other stores closer to home for me. But for those of you on the East Coast, this might be an option for you. So that's Quilter's Quest Fabric Shop. So, uh, what's coming up? Well, of course, the International Stitch Marathon on July the 22nd starts at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's 12 hours of working on whatever you want to work on and enjoying the company of others. And there may be a couple of surprises built into there as well. As you know, it's being sponsored by about uh, 10 of us uh, YouTube creators. And I have been featuring over the last few weeks uh each one of those uh content creators on here and here is and i believe this will be the last one that i'm introducing and that is karen winchester who by the way i have put out a feeler to her as well for an interview and uh we're just trying to settle on a date and time now so karen if you see this let me know um because i haven't heard from you <laughs> anyways hint 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 but uh yeah so this is karen winchester uh so take a take a look at this this week i'd like to introduce you to one of the co-hosts for the international stitch marathon coming up on july the 22nd and her name is karen winchester and she has a youtube channel called crafty quilting cooking vlogging traveling australia so she is obviously from australia so you can get a feel for what karen is all about she's a very interesting person and i'm sure when you meet her on the international stitch marathon you're going to enjoy knowing her. But here's a little bit about her according to what's on her YouTube channel. She says, hi guys, welcome. See my husband Carl and I travel around Australia in our caravan. Check us out to see all the campsites, cooking, quilting, and documenting of our travels. Join us on the channel and see our journey as we left the UK and arrived in Australia and share my love of creating and crafting content. Um, so actually I was wrong. Karen is not from Australia. She just does her video about Australia. She is actually from the UK. So I think she'd be a very interesting person to check out and to know more about and check out her YouTube channel and links will be in the show notes below. And of course Craft and Chat is coming up this week. As I record this on July the 5th, it's tomorrow, Wednesday, July the 6th, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we run until approximately 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a drop-in. Uh, come, spend as much time as you want with uh, the rest of us, whoever is there, working on our projects, talking, laughing, having a good time, getting things done. Um, I always have that the first Wednesday of every month. Those of you that are on my mailing list have already received your personal link to uh, the Zoom. Uh, and the, the rest of you, well, the Zoom link's in the show notes below. So feel free. Uh, you don't need a special invitation to join. If you're free and you want to, just do it. It's great. All are welcome. So I always look forward to it. I'll probably be working on that uh, Twister, uh, oh, Twister Holiday wreath thing. Think about it. Um, you know, I, I guess. Or finishing up the binding on uh, those rest of those table runners or something. I'll be busy. Whatever. And I get a lot done during craft and chat. So I hope to see you then. And that's it for me this week. I hope you have a good week. I hope to see some of you uh, at craft and chat. And I will see you later. Next week. Go out and create something that makes you happy. We'll see you next week. Bye bye for now.